Hello, we are here with uh, Natasha Harley. Natasha, thank you very much for being with us. Natasha is a co-founder of a cyber expert, uh, a simple uh, platform of recruitment to provide a business with a fast and more scalable way to hire experts on cybersecurity. I mean, we know he's, a, he's a probably a, a short talent in the market, but I think Natasha also is a vice president of a UK affiliate of Women in Cybersecurity. So we're going to be talking about the market, hiring process, what is on the cybersecurity, and also the human uh, that is based on the UK. We had uh, a session, I think, previously with the, um, uh, the Latin. Uh, women uh, on the cybersecurity, and now is the time for us to talk about the UK uh, on the on this incentive as well. That is very important. So Natasha, thank you very much for being with us. So I think it's, it's an interesting aspect to be today with the COVID-19, and I think for you, uh, as you are expert on the subject of uh, hiring, and I think that is the kind of uh, main interest of many to understand. What sh how should I behave or how should I be in front of uh, the recruiters in this scenario? Since they're kind of, uh, from my, my view, and maybe I'm wrong here, but you are the expert, of course, is increasing every day. So every day we have more, you know, and more uh, uh, job uh, roles being promoted for the cybersecurity. And I think in, in, in that COVID scenario, what is the market condition for the cybersecurity uh, in overall, for UK or even a global market, uh, Natasha? Yeah, hi, Raphael. Thank you for having me. Um, so, you know, the impact of COVID has, has really left no sector untouched. Um, and since most employers are, you know, sort of still working from home, the online tools and networks we now use every day are at a greater risk than ever. Um, you know, as we know, the economy is struggling and, and many careers are taking hits. But, but the positive of that is that the pandemic has created, you know, an even greater need for more cybersecurity talent to support efforts to keep data and, and customers safe. So, you know, we've seen a short term sort of hold on recruitment whilst businesses sort of fall to their budgets. But businesses are now starting to really look towards sort of strengthening their teams and, and, you know, sort of looking at what that looks like for, for 2021. Uh, it, it is a, a fundamental important aspect as well to define the talent short, uh, shortage versus the high job applications and the reality. What is the kind of a, what is the reality there? And I think I, I remember that we, we we touch base on that. Are they looking for more experienced people, or are they are looking more for the qualified based on the certification, or is it a little bit of both? Yeah, it's certainly a little bit of both. You know, for the past six months, um, a large number of organisations have, have only been making business critical hires, you know, which has led to a, a shortage of opportunities and then a huge increase in applications. Um, you know, sort of what, we, what we've seen in the market is that the, the most requirements have been for sort of, you know, sort of engineer level through to kind of CISO level. So there's kind of not ground um you know with fewer open positions available this is kind of driven competition and only a small percentage of the candidate market are, are really getting a looking you know we might be wrongly sort of fooled into believing that there isn't a talent shortage with so many job applications but how aligned are those applicants to the roles that you're trying to fill and in an economic downturn you know sort of job seekers are all fighting for the same roles and often applying for jobs they wouldn't usually apply for and, and what can we i mean expect from the kind of from the business what they are looking from the profession on the cyber security so what are i mean maybe there is some trends that the professional should be kind of adding on the cv to help them to be in front of uh, you know the hiring manager or not yeah absolutely so um you know there's there's a number of things that you know sort of the job seekers should be should be considering is you know firstly have you got a winning cv i mean it sounds basic but it's the reader's first impression of you and and how you could be a match to the role you know simple structure it's not a design competition um you need to keep it simple in a word or pdf format as well so that it's compatible with with ats's that we often see in in you know sort of in-house teams um you know sort of no unusual designs and tables etc um, you know, you need to have a short summary about, you know, sort of about you that really tells the reader who you are, what you do and, and what you stand for and what your aspirations are. You've got five seconds to impress, really. So you need to make it count. Um, you know, are those skills relevant to the role? 
um, you know, in terms of, you know, the, the, the role that you've got in front of you, you know, how can you demonstrate that expertise and, and you know, sort of how it correlates with the details of the advert, um, you know, sort of demonstrate a passion for learning, you know, and understanding more about your industry just to show, you know, as I say, that understanding, but also that that sort of forward learning. Um, you know, CV should only really be two pages maximum as well. You know, one CV doesn't fit all applications um, and avoid that scattergun approach. Um, you know, there's 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 a, a number of things we can talk about on that side and probably I could talk about that for hours. <laughs> but I think with your eye in the kind of a, what is the business looking is kind of a, for the cybersecurity professionals is kind of a trying to address because as you mentioned, sometimes we the, the cyber professionals wants to add too much on the CV and doesn't look great. And sometimes not adding less, I mean, adding not enough should be creating even more concern because and then you don't get qualified or even the filters that most of the companies use today doesn't get pick it up so it's kind of a it's a balancing things up and i think it's definitely you're right i think when for example i see some cvs coming i think you you you, you kind of uh, browse in the cv for, as, as a human to see what kind of a you know interests me more from the experience side from the professional or the skills to that kind of a combining everything as as a, as in a whole but yeah that's this very important aspect as well but in terms of a job job title yeah. in versus skills what is what is kind of what's happening there because now cyber security becomes like a, a part of the business not only to reduce risk but also part fundamental part for keeping the business functioning uh, as the transformation digital is happening at the same time so in terms of uh, what you what you you've been seeing in, in the market today about the job titles versus the skills that we have is that is, you know, is, is, is a compatibility there? Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, that the, the challenge that we have with job titles is that they can be very cryptic um, and they vary widely from organisation to organisation and especially in cybersecurity where, you know, that landscape and, and it, you know, it evolves so quickly. So, you know, what I would recommend from, you know, sort of a, a candidate perspective or a job seeker perspective is to perhaps, you know, sort of when they're searching for the right role for them is actually to maybe use more Boolean search techniques to find opportunities which are based on relevant skills and keywords rather than an actual job title. That, that's a, a, another interesting Let's put on that way as you as we describe application hacks for you to be successful on your application that is, is being written by Natasha. Now thank you for, for that information. And in terms of how they can identify the industries that are hiring at the moment, how, how what is the kind of uh, tips that you can give to them for, for taking this as a kind of advantage in, in their favor? Absolutely. So, you know, it's a good point. Um, you know, not all industries have been hit by the pandemic and actually many of them are thriving. You know, potentially it's worth considering businesses that have either, you know, sort of recently gone through a round of funding or industries, you know, that 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 are still thriving, as I say. So, you know, things like government, healthcare manufacturing, um, you know, sort of managed service, you know, managed security service providers as well, because, you know, these many businesses are also looking to outsource, you know, those security requirements, um, you know, to, to support those ongoing risks. In, in terms of diversity, since that we are living a new normal, um, so the, 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 the crisis also generate opportunities for those living abroad, or not so much, but in terms of uh, what's going to be the kind of uh, the new uh, you know how are you going to attract the new generation uh the next generation and also bring it di diversity because now you're not saying about you don't need to be in uk you don't need to be in us you can be working wherever you are whatever you want with the flexible module as well around so things has changed so how do we see diversity now playing on and i i think it's a great opportunity for Yeah, absolutely. I think there is um, incredible opportunity now for businesses to actually, you know, sort of uh, dip into a much wider talent pool. Of course, we do have to consider sort of tax implications um, through, you know, from, from sort of region to region. Um, but in terms of um, sort of diversity in cybersecurity, you know, having that in place could really result in fewer people uh, or not, sorry, rather not having that in place could result um, in fewer people from more diverse backgrounds from joining the industry in the future. 
you know, we really need people with different backgrounds because, you know, sort of the people the industry are pursuing, you know, sort of threat actors, hackers, etc., also have a wide variety of backgrounds and experiences. You know, so the wider variety of people and experiences, you know, businesses have defended in their networks, the kind of, you know, the sort of the, the better their chances of success. Um, you know, you talking about sort of attracting, you know, that next generation as well. And I think, you know, as an industry, um, we need to look at perception on that. And, you know, we really need to educate sort of youth and, and particularly females that cybersecurity jobs cover a kind of vast and diverse amount of positions. Um, yes, you know, some roles may require computer science skills or, or networking and engineering skills, but, but that doesn't mean that you have to wear a hoodie or, you know, and code all day. So, you know, in the media, the industry is, is depicted as, you know, dark and, and sometimes strange. Um, and, you know, sort of false perception of the industry is becoming sort of one of the biggest barriers to entry for younger generations. And I think, you know, as an industry, we all have a, um, our part to do to sort of change that perception and, and ensure it's considered as, you know, sort of cool and exciting to that next generation. Yeah, I think it's, it's very important. I think it's, it's, it's fundamental that the, the, the ladies come forward on the cybersecurity as they are coming. Uh, I used to lecture on the West London University and uh, I think it's growing uh, the seats uh, from the, the, the ladies to be more present and needed uh, in this industry. So since that we are talking about women in security, and I know that you are a vice president of uh, one of the uh, great initiatives of a uh, woman in, in, to, to, uh, to get around and tackle the problem, helping the ladies to be around, the woman to be around of cybersecurity. So tell, me, tell us more about um, how this is important as well to bring the, the, the uh, ladies to the market or the women to the market on the cybersecurity. And as you said, uh, w what is the kind of, uh, there is no competition here, but I, I think what is being said as well, and is a very good quick comparison here, I know probably, I think in East uh, Europe, there is one region that there are more ladies on the engineering side than men. I think, I don't remember which one is that, but I, I remember we debate so many times about it. And what can we do to help uh, to incentivize women to come forward on the cybersecurity? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, the kind of two sides to consider with that is 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 a perception, um, you know, and, and you know, and, and also role models in the industry as well. You know, the more role models that women have to potentially look up to, um, you know, more that will attract women into the industry. Um, so, you know, in terms of um, WESIS or Women in Cybersecurity, um, they're an international non-profit membership organisation which is solely dedicated to bringing together and essentially empowering women in cybersecurity. And that's not just, you know, those that are already working on the tools, but from academia um, and research as well. Um, so WESIS was actually founded in 2013 um, in the US and it's since grown into a global, you know, sort of alliance of affiliates um, and community of experts. And they've now got um, just over 5,000 members worldwide, which is just incredible. Um, and, you know, as you say, it's not about men versus women. It's, it's, it's about diversity of thought. Um, you know, and, and a different perspective that potentially a woman could bring to, you know, to a business and to an industry. Um, so, you know, we, um, we've been talking to WESIS um, as cyber experts um, for some time now to sort of use some of the content to support our candidate community. Um, and then was later invited to set up and, and lead a UK affiliate, which we're, you know, incredibly excited about. Um, we built a leadership team and, and WESIS UK was established um, in July of this year. Um, and, you know, we're a community of cybersecurity enthusiasts, you know, out of purpose. And that's to, you know, recruit, um, re retain and advance women in cybersecurity. Uh, no, it's a, it's a very, I mean, it's an honor to see that happening and also a privilege to see uh, those incentives because uh, I think it's important to highlight this is a non-profit organization, and this is more about passioning uh, and about bringing this together. So it's your time, free time that you could be, you know, doing other stuff, but also you're passionate about the industry. And I think that's what makes things happening in, in a good way. And, you know, I'm open any anytime that you need some help in lectures or whatever I can contribute, please, uh, you know, where to, to reach me. So I think, uh, uh, Natasha, it's, um, it's a privilege to have you on the channel. 
probably we're gonna have more sessions so this is the first one uh, there is gonna be questions that we're gonna send to you from our followers that um, you know we expect to have a live in the near future but I think this is kind of a let's uh, you know uh, share the knowledge that you have on the recruitment also the uh, offering for in UK for the human to be part of uh, your uh, organization uh, or being together in this kind of uh, uh, um, uh, um, environment and I think that's it no thank you very much for your help do you want to share uh, uh, one last word with us and um, I think you know sort of in in in, uh, in searching and um, for new opportunities in the industry at the moment don't be put off and um, you know this is once you're in cybersecurity industries is a career for life and and more than anything just be authentic be yourself um and 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 that will take you where you want to be fantastic natasha thank you very much for your help really appreciate thank you for having thank me you. My pleasure bye-bye